Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some more Mana Lords. The game releases tomorrow in early access, so I thought it would be perfect to go and make a video explaining some of the best options you can do when starting out your village so for those of you who are maybe diving into mana lords for the first time or even those of you who have been watching it throughout this youtuber period i'll hopefully be able to give you the tools to start your first village and get it up and running and basically survive your first winter whether you're playing on the hardest difficulty or just out there looking to have some fun so you've just loaded into your first mana lords campaign and this is what you're greeted with of course it's great to go and take a look at the layer of the land see what you've got rich in and see what else is around you territory that you're going to be expanding to how your fertility is all that stuff is very very important so outside of the obvious of getting up your logging camp and your wood cutting lodge your hunting cabin your forager hut you know stuff like that your very basic basic stuff one thing i highly recommend you do early on when you're building your houses is build a handful of them something along these lines right here so set up like this and then have very long gardens and the reason you want to have these long gardens Gardens is because vegetables, one of the resources you can stick in these these uh, set up these plots right here, actually scale with the length of the garden itself. So if we go and click on this, these gardens are extremely useful. These allow you to produce the higher tier settings and everything else along the lines. But in the early game, our main focus is going to be vegetables. If we build a chicken coop, that will give us the same amount of chicken eggs, depending on it doesn't matter on the size of the garden. However, if we go ahead and grab these vegetable gardens, you can see that actually the plot size actually matters so the larger this is the more vegetables you're going to be receiving and this is really really crucial in the first year of the game because this basically allows you to survive your first winter without really having to worry too much about farming so i highly recommend you maybe have two or three of these on the go in 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 the beginning of your game like the first couple of houses you build you build maybe two maybe three of them like this each one of these vegetable gardens costs you 15 of your regional wealth. You start off with 50. So what you could do is you could go ahead and build two of these and then get yourself a second ox. If you wanted to, oxes, I believe we go over to our hitching post, are 20 silver. So what you could do is you could buy two of these uh, two of these oxes. You'd have to obviously build another hitching post to go and make it uh, ready. But yeah, you could build two of them and then two gardens with vegetables. These vegetables with long gardens should be enough to sustain you along with the berries. I mean, in this example, it's not great because we have a very rich berry deposit and a very rich wild animal deposit like this is the ultimate non-farming setup but having multiple types of foods will allow you to level up and get access to higher tier workshops from the gardens of your settlements so even if you do have plenty of other food types it's still a really useful to grab these up because again it'll put less pressure on the other ones allowing you to go ahead and accumulate more and more food so highly recommend setting up your gardens as one of the first things you do in your houses the next big tip and we're diving into one of my more built up settlements to go and show this one off is do not hesitate to move people around from jobs don't just feel like you need to leave people on certain jobs throughout the game really some of the best ways to go ahead and start out especially in the early game when you're low on families which work for jobs is assigning them when and where you need them for example we are producing currently quite a lot of logging right here so we actually don't mean we don't need that many families on here maybe we have plenty and we're not planning on building there's no reason to have these families working on the logging camp obviously you need to make sure that you keep on and remembering that oh yeah i need to bring people back when our supplies are running a little bit low but right now these these workers will be really useful elsewhere like we're running a little bit low on fuel maybe it's time to harvest like as you can see i've got all these families in here ready to harvest in the farmhouse because it's harvesting season and we're going to want to force harvest a few of these early on to get this working but as soon as we're harvested and as soon as we've kind of tended to the fields i'm going to take all of these people off and put them on other jobs because in the winter they're not doing anything there maybe we necessarily don't need them you know again especially in the early game you're going to want to be micromanaging like onto the granary maybe to go in and and transport all the food and then as soon as you've transported the food from you know the, the surrounding regions to the granary you're going to immediately want to take that family off of the granary put them something else because you just don't have the families in the early game to spare again maybe i've built up enough firewood right here and we just now necessarily don't need as many families on 
uh, on that resource. Again, the same with hunting. When you're running low on hunting or maybe the berry deposit has run out, make sure you do take them families off of that uh, so that, you know, they can go and work other jobs. It's a really important thing to understand in the early game and basically requiring you to just do a little bit of micromanagement to make sure that your families are on the jobs they need to be. So just keep an eye on your resources, keep an eye on what, what families are working what uh, what jobs. And a really, again, useful tip is press tab. Tab is an amazing tool because this shows you how many people and how many families are working in each of your buildings. So you can quite easily follow it. It shows you where you can, when you can upgrade certain buildings. It shows you when, uh, when places have gardens that can be upgraded to certain stuff. Definitely my tip number two is make sure you use the tab button and you micromanage your families. You'll all of a sudden realize that you're getting in all the resources you need. And the game does a pretty good job, I feel like, of showing you when, uh, when you do need certain resource up here with the, the fuel and food. So again, you'll notice that maybe your fuel's dropping a bit low. You just stick maybe another family on woodcutting, take them off of something else that you necessarily don't need. This actually brings me on to my next point, which is trading. Trading is an extremely valuable tool that you're going to want to be utilizing as quickly as possible. Building up regional wealth will allow you to expand your villages so much quicker because you'll be able to utilize the gardens to get more resources. And then, you know, it make it, you need money to make money. And then as soon as when you do get that, you're going to be, you know, calling in the, the banks and making tons of cash. And one of the easiest ways to do that is hitting a tier two house, which is very simply done. You just need to meet their, their current demands right here. You can see uh, that this house is almost there. It just needs two types of food. A little bit of clothing, which you can get from leather early on. That's just a tannery and hunting. They're some basic buildings you build right away and ones you're going to want to do. But yeah, if you get two different types of food, which you should if you followed my previous tips of berries, hunting, and vegetables, you'll be able to upgrade these to level two, which will then give you access to the upgraded craft workshops. You can see, for example, this house is ready to upgrade. So upgrading that is you know, a pretty easy task. I and mean, then, as I mentioned, when you hit tier two, you're going to be able to start getting these upgraded, uh, these upgraded workshops. And I highly recommend the first one you build is the Fletcher. Now, obviously, trade is going to change for uh, the access and actually think has already traded. But this is a very, very useful job. If I find my Fletcher right here, you'll be able to see if we go to general, these guys are currently making a bow. So all the families here are making us war bows, which are really useful. And it's a super cheap resource because you don't need anything fancy whatsoever from the Fletcher shop. All they do is they take planks, which you'll be producing to get your church up and running. Um, and all they use is they, they require planks and then you're making war bows. This will be a great way of obviously supplementing your military early on, but also it will allow you to start selling them and building up regional wealth, which then you can in turn build more workshops. You can also then in turn upgrade and buy the stuff that you actually need. If we take a look at the trade and we go over here to the military, you are going to need to be able to spend a little bit of regional wealth, but you can do that by selling some stuff, which is not a bad uh, bad idea whatsoever. You can sell stuff that you necessarily don't need. For example, in this region, I'm selling uh, clay roof tiles and any weapons that I'm making, or sorry, any raw resources I'm making to get me enough to then start selling stuff. But yeah, you can see that we are just pumping out war bows. I have one Fletcher and I'm constantly selling war bows and we're still running a surplus, which is very useful. And every time this is making me five for each war bow we sell. So this is a great way to make money in the early game. Granted, I think the developer has changed this slightly lightly with a bit more of a supply and demand but the idea still stands try and get processed goods into something as quickly as possible and then start selling them. If, for example, the war bow strategy isn't going to be, isn't going to work, and I think it's still going to be fine to get you going, so don't worry about it. But for example, looking at my region, we have a rich iron de iron deposit, so we have infinite iron, and then we also have infinite clay. So immediately going, going down and getting a blacksmith down to start making iron slabs would be a great idea, or going in and getting a clay furnace early on to making roof tiles. Roof tiles is a very good way of making money, uh, as you guys can see, it's actually a very, very good process. Good, and all it takes is a clay furnace. That's it. Clay furnace, which takes in fuel and clay. And that's literally it. And we're making eight in export. You know, it's a very, very good way to make money. So please, you know, it might look a little bit intimidating, but try and get this stuff up where you can process goods and sell them as quickly as possible. Once again, we can stay in my save right here. Uh, and the next good tip is getting your mana house up early. The mana house is a very, very powerful tool because it does unlock your retinue, but it's pretty easy to get. You do have to hit the small village, which I believe is roughly around about a couple tier two buildings. But yeah, I 
recommend rushing this as quickly as possible because this will give you access to the retinue, which are an extremely powerful unit. You can see my retinue are currently out hunting bandits and it's very good to do this early. This elite squadron of soldiers is an extremely powerful unit. Granted, mine have now been upgraded. So you can see I've managed to upgrade these guys to 24 by building more garrison towers. But even at the base tier, even at the simple mana uh, level when you first build your mana you get about eight of these guys unupgraded but still extremely powerful and the reason why you want to go and grab these guys as quickly as possible is so you can start clearing out a lot of the bandit camps bandit camps will spawn around the map and they'll be basically extremely annoying to deal with they'll start killing uh stealing your supplies literally look at that they just stole a bunch of my supplies and in the early game you can't really afford for that to be a thing because again you start losing these supplies and that might be the difference between you making it through the winter and you dying as soon as you get this retinue unlocked, you're going to be able to start clearing them. And I recommend doing that just with the retinue. As long as you don't fatigue these guys. So you basically want to either walk them to where they're going or get them close enough so that it doesn't aggro the brigands. And then you go and rest them up to 100% of fatigue so they're ready to go. They will stomp them. Even like eight of your retinue, you might lose one on an off chance. But for the most part, you won't. So as soon as you get the retinue, you send them off to start clearing these bandit camps because that will give you a lot of regional wealth or it will give you more treasury to then upgrade your upgrade your retinue so then as soon as you get to 10 plus there is no way you're going to lose a soldier from them so it's a really good way of booming getting loads of resources again to help you import the stuff you need to keep on upgrading and I think the most important thing is it then also means that you don't have to send your militia to go and deal with these. One of the real downsides of sending a militia is it takes jobs away. For example, if I rally these 30 uh, spearmen right here, uh, and then we click maybe on the farmhouse. If I, if we got, yeah, I actually don't have people in the farmhouse. But yeah, if I rally them, and when I go somewhere like this, you're going to see that this guy is actually a soldier right here. And now he is no longer working this job. So by raising this militia... This dude is now not cutting me wood. And again, if I'm doing this in winter, having 30 people not working jobs is a pretty big deal, right? So that's why it's just really important to get your retinue up early with that manor house so you can start clearing these camps. And again, it will start giving you so much regional wealth, so much uh, so much kind of treasury income that you're going to be laughing all the way to the bank, seriously. And all you need is about, all you need is the basic eight or nine militia. Hey, finally, I think what we're going to go and dive into is the policies and the development. So these are the things you should be picking up right right away in my opinion um, because they'll basically give you the best shot of just setting up your first town. Keep in mind though that every single development tree is different so you can specialize certain regions. For example, this is different to my home region uh, which is over here. So every village you expand to is going to be a little bit different and, and worth picking up. And this this will be like good because you only get a certain amount of these upgrades every time you upgrade from a medium town to a large town or, or vice versa. You're going to get a development point and you don't really want to waste them. So what I recommend doing is if you've got heavy farming and you want to go into farming early I recommend picking up the heavy plow right away this is going to allow you to go and uh, use your ox to plow the fields and I also again a little nice little bonus tip is I recommend you having longer fields rather than massive fields I recommend especially in the early game when you don't have a lot of families have basically a field like these sizes you know maybe this this is what you go for if you're planning on doing farming early with the heavy plow and a couple families you will be fine and again in, in when you when you're sowing quickly to stick all your families on farming to get this done uh, and again even if you're like kind of fully harvested force harvest early as well it will always harvest in autumn um but you can just like force harvest now for example um you might miss out on a little bit of a wheat but then then families can kind of do this and then make it a little bit easy on you in autumn so you're not that rushed to uh, sell and stuff. But yeah, that's not my point. Sorry, there's a bonus tip right there. But yeah, if you are planning on farming, get heavy plow right away. It's going to be super useful. If you're not, I recommend right away going down trade logistics and then better deals. These could change a little bit, but still getting these trading perks early on are going to be so useful. Trade logistics means that you now only get maximum 25 gold whenever you make a new trade route. This is extremely powerful because because normally a lot of the weapons, like for example, the war bow ones, normally it's roughly, I think, around about 95 gold to make this up early. And in the early game, you don't really have that money to spend. Same for a lot of the weaponry as well, the gambesons, the armors, etc. When it's a major trade, you need a trade route to do that. And these cost hundreds, some cost 200 gold. Like you just don't have the money to do that. So getting that trade perk early is really useful. And then the sooner you get better deals, oh my lord, will you be laughing all the way to the bank.
bank. Better Deals is incredible because this basically removes all of the import tariffs that you'll be buying. Again, I expect these to be changing, but whilst they are similar, I'm sure they're still going to be really strong. Um, so basically what that means is normally you pay like 10 extra plus gold. So again, we'll take, a, take an example of barley. Barley is an extremely useful resource. If you're not going to have fertile lands, you're going to have a hard time getting it and you need it to upgrade to tier three as quickly as possible um, because the tier two villages want beer uh, and that's fair enough, right? But normally it costs you 12 gold to import a sack of barley. 12 gold. And if you're, for example, wanting to keep your, your stockpiles at around about 10 so you can keep the flow of alcohol to your village, that's going to be costing you 120 gold every time the trader comes to town. That's a lot of money, right? We would have to sell a ton of war bows to make that happen, right? We'd have to sell, uh, you know, what, 20 plus war bows? That's a lot of planks, etc. However, now that we've got that trade perk, we're going to be able to... Uh, we're going to be able to import that for 20 gold. That means we only have to sell four war bows to basically keep our barley stocks really, really healthy and sustain most of our village. Like having a 10 surplus will be enough to sustain my 100, 200 person village right there. And all we have to do for that is sell four war bows, you know, like, so getting that perk right away is really important. I then maybe recommend going down the basic armory route because, again, this is a great resource you can sell. I guess it's a good idea if you have a rich iron deposit, grabbing this basic armory, probably around about four, four, four yeah, maybe like fourth after these would be a really good idea. I recommend unless you've got like a really rich berry deposit, and you've got really bad farming, I recommend probably avoiding the majority of this. I wouldn't go down any of the hunting stuff. It's just not that good. And you're limited on how many points you get. So you want to really specialize. Um, the forest management is decent on a rich berry deposit if you need it. Um, but again, these aren't very important. I recommend maybe specializing your second village and like beekeeping and then trading that stuff back. But yeah, for the most part, I recommend getting heavy plow, getting the trade perks right tier, and then going down the armory and then selling it. Uh, and again, with better deals, you can also just import iron. So even, even if, even if you don't have good iron, you could just honestly import iron. Uh, it's under commodity, no, it's under materials, right? You import iron for free gold, you make it into armor uh, and helmets, um, and then you sell that for six, right? And then you make a profit. And even the male armor right tier is worth eight. So again, if you upgrade a little bit more down to uh, armory or or even master armory worker yeah you just end up making so much money and then you can start just importing everything you need the different types of food etc uh, and then you'll be yeah you'll be in a very good spot even with the trade changes so that is going to do it for my video hopefully it helped out hopefully you guys have a better understanding as i mentioned just to quickly run through all the tips get your long garlands up asap the vegetables will be invaluable they will take some time to grow much like crops but it's still going to be very very useful Obviously, micromanage your families as much as you can. Do not neglect your trade whatsoever. Getting that up and running is really useful. And you may feel like it's like a mid to late game thing. But the sooner you do it, the sooner you will be happy. Of course, your retinue is super important. And as you can see, we absolutely massacred them. Uh, them bandits right there uh, very, very effectively. And again, my fatigue was really bad there. That's why we lost a soldier. But normally, as long as you rest up to 100% fatigue and you just walk to battle and you don't lose it. Yeah, you'll be in a very, very good spot. And you pick the right perks, you'll be, yeah, you'll have a way all the time. And I, again, as I said, I recommend doing all of that stuff for your first playthrough because it'll just give you the ropes. It'll set you up and you can really experiment with stuff later on. In maybe when you when you go ahead and build your second village in this region, you go ahead and conquer another region. And then you can really start to experiment with different perks and different setups and stuff. But yeah, for now, as I said, this is how I'd recommend kind of doing stuff with the smaller village plots are going to be really, really useful. And uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to put a like and a comment down below. I've got an entire Let's Play on the game if you're interested in that. I'll see you guys in the next.